Hello, my name is Gabriela Imre and I'm working as a research engineer at the Lifestyle Imaging Facility at Karolinska Institute in Sweden. In this tutorial, I will give you a brief introduction to the NIS Element software and go through some basic features to get you started. NIS Elements is the software for the Nikon systems. On the desktop, you can find two icons. The icon that has a name with a number is the acquisition software. This is the NIS Elements acquisition software, which allows image capture, visualization, and analysis. Only turn on this software when the hardware is on. The second icon has analysis in the name. This software does not communicate with the hardware. You can find it on the microscope's computers and on the offline computers. The NIS Elements acquisition software work with tabs. The starting layout has six tabs. The NIS Elements software is used by many users, but each user has a customized layout with the tabs he or she uses. If you want to save your own layout, right-click on the Dock Control tab, choose Save Current Layout As, and give it your name. You can now right-click on the new layout and save it as default. If you accidentally close one of your tabs, right-click on your layout to reload it. If you want to add additional tab or tabs to your layout, for example, the tab Open Images, right-click on the background of the NIS elements and choose Visualization Controls and then Open Images. The Open Image tab will be displayed. Drag the tab to the right, left or bottom of the NIS elements window until you see a purple bar. Release. The tab is now displayed at the location you've chosen and you can save it as an integrated part of your layout. You can in the same way add several other tabs. Now I will present the functionalities of some of the tabs in the basic layout. The TIPad tab, some features within the A1 plus Compa GUI tab, and A1 one plus scan area tab. The TI pad tab controls the microscope. This is where you choose objectives. Click on one objective to select it and it will hi be highlighted in green. By keeping the cursor of your mouse on the objective, you can see specifications. For example, the 60x objective is an oil immersion objective whereas this one is specified as WI, which means it's a water immersion objective. Please be careful and use the correct immersion medium when choosing objectives. In the TI pad tab, you can see the microscope port to which the light goes. This is set automatically by the software. E100 means 100% of the light goes to the eyepiece. R100 means 100% of the light goes to the confocal port. R100 means 100% of the light goes to the camera port, if the microscope is equipped with a camera. The TI pad also allows you to change filter cubes if you are looking at fluorescence in the eyepiece. The next tab is the A1 Plus Compact GUI tab. It provides you with all the features concerning image acquisition, scanning, excitation, and detection. In this video, I will describe three functions displayed by this tab. The capture function, the iPod function, and the light path function. On top of the A1 Plus Compact GUI tab, you will find the Scan, Capture and Find buttons. Scan continuously scans the sample. The Scan button works like a live view. 
capture will take a snapshot of the sample. Find is mostly used to quickly refocus on your sample with a lower image quality but a faster scan speed. The steps described below are only to be done when you first start the microscope. These steps are described in the folder found next to each microscope. In the folder, you can also find instructions on how to switch on and off the system, as well as information about the available lasers and objectives, and contact information if you need help. In the A1 Plus Copac GUI tab, the iPod button allows you to toggle between looking in the eyepiece and imaging. When we start the NIS Element software, we first need to set the iPod on and iPod off states by following the five steps below. Click iPod. When on, it turns green. Select Bright Field at the top of the screen. When on, it turns green. These first two steps set the iPod on state. You can now look in the eyepiece to find your sample and focus on the area of interest. We now need to set the iPod off state by following these three steps. Deselect iPod. Click on Galvo. When on, it turns green. Remove the interlock. We have now set the iPod off state and we can acquire an image. You only need to set the on and off states immediately after turning NIS Element software on at the start of your imaging session. Afterwards, only select or deselect the iPod button to toggle between bright field in the eyepiece and your last imaging settings. All the other steps will be done automatically. If you do not follow these five steps at the start of your imaging session, you might end up imaging with the bright field lamp on. Let's assume that you find a region of interest within your sample and you would like to start imaging. Before you do this, you need to select the appropriate lasers and filters for your sample. This is done in the live path window, which you can find by clicking on this button. A new image window will pop up containing all information regarding lasers, dichroic mirrors, and filters. In this area, we see which lasers are available on the system. The excitation light from the lasers reaches the primary dichroic mirror. You must select a dichroic mirror specified for all the lasers that you want to use. In this area, you can choose to acquire, or not, a bright field image by toggling the transmission detection in or out. When the lasers are turned on, they will excite the fluorophore you use to label your sample, which will then start emitting light. This emitted light is sent by the primary dichroic mirror to the secondary dichroic mirrors that will separate the emitted light and send it through the emission filters further toward the detectors. This confocal is equipped with four detectors, two normal photomultiplier tubes, abbreviated PMTs, and two CASP PMTs, which are much more sensitive than the normal PMTs. Each detector has a laser associated to it. You can select or deselect a laser detector pair using these boxes. The laser associated with each detector can be changed here. Finally here, you can select the appropriate filter cube containing the secondary dichroic mirror emission filters. If you are unsure which laser or filter to use, please watch the LCI video called Blitzo. Here, you can see a summary of the whole light path as you have set it.
You can select a name for each channel by clicking on these triangles and selecting the name of your floral form from the drop down list. The selected name will appear at the bottom left corner of the image you acquired. Alternatively, you can simply type the name here. After you have localized your sample and set the light path according to your floral force, it's time to grab an image. Before you push the capture button, check first which area you are scanning under A1 Plus Scan Area tab. This dialog allows you to zoom or dezoom. The green square shows the area that will be scanned when you push the capture or scan button. When grabbing your first image, it's advisable to choose the maximum scan area so that you can see as much as possible of your sample. Now you have grabbed an image. Let's assume that you would like to zoom more. You can do that in two ways. Resize the green square. The square becomes red and you confirm the new scan area by either clicking on the square or by hitting enter. You can also enter the zoom volume of choice here or move the slider and hit enter. You can also use an image to physically move the stage. Let's say that you would like to grab an image with this point at the center. Place your mouse at the point of interest. Right click and select move this point to the center. This will move the stage. You can now grab an image with your position of interest in the center of the image. While scanning, by clicking on this button, you also have the option to move the stage by dragging the image. You have now learned the five steps you must follow when you start Enhanced Elements. You have also learned how to set the light path, zoom in and out, and move the scan area. Now you have acquired some images. At the top of each image window, you can find the Split Components button to split the image in the, into individual channels. The button next to it allows you to add the overlay of all your channels. If you would like to display two channels out of several, remove the split, select the first channel of interest so that only that one is displayed, press Ctrl and click on the second channel. Now you will only display the two channels of interest. To toggle between displaying the channels in black and white or color, use this shortcut Ctrl Alt Shift C. If you would like to extract one channel as a separate image, click on the name of your channel of interest. Then press Alt button on your keyboard and drag the display to the background of the software and then release. A new image will be displayed with only your channel of interest. A scale bar can be added from the right side image window toolbar. After positioning the scale bar where you want it, you can click on the triangle next to the scale bar icon to change its properties such as color, thickness, etc. You can also run simple measurements on your image by opening the Annotation and Measurements tab. The measurements can be exported to Excel. Some of the measurements tools require to double-click or right-click to be able to do anything else. As everywhere in NIS Elements, annotations can be toggled on and off by clicking on the icon and can be deleted by clicking on the triangle.
Now that you know how to acquire images and measure feature of interest, it's time to learn how to save and present your images. If you would like to quickly convert your saved images so that you can present them in PowerPoint or Word, you need to first display the images you want to show it. For example, split and that scale bar. Then choose one of these two options. First option, click the X letter on your keyboard. This automatically converts the 12-bit multi-channel image to an 8-bit RGB image that can be saved as JPEG or TIFF and opened in any image software. The second option is to create a report by selecting File, Report, Send Current Image to Report. This opens a new software independent of NIS elements. If you do the same sequence with another image, the image will be added below the first one. You can now resize or annotate the image in the report. Once you are done with your report, go to File in the Report software and select Export to RTF to save the report in such a way that you can open it with Word or PowerPoint. The, same fu the Save function only allows you to read view and modify the report in NIS. The F10 button on your keyboard or this button in the NIS element software will allow you to quickly toggle between your normal layout and thumbnails of your saved images in your folder. The size of the thumbnail can be changed. You can have two folders open at the same time. For example, one with your data folder and the other with your external hard disk folder. Regardless whether you choose to create reports or save RGB images, you must always save your acquired images in the original .nd2 format. ND2 files can be opened by several softwares. The NIS Element Acquisition software on the microscope's computers, NIS Element Analysis software found on the offline computers, the NIS Element Viewer that you can download for free to your own computer, other scientific software such as ImageJ, Fiji. Please be sure to save two copies of your data and be aware that you are responsible for your backup. It is of utmost importance to have a good management of your images so that later on you will know exactly which image belongs to which experiment, which protocol you use to stain the samples in your image, or which method you use to analyze that particular image. Thank you for your attention.